mean, I'm, I'm thankful to be before you today. I'm thankful for you all pressing your way in today. And today, my, my message today is entitled 99 Just Won't Do. And my text comes from the book of Luke, chapter 15. In Luke 15, there's three stories in Luke, three parables. One we're going to focus in on today is the parable of the lost sheep. And two other parables is one of the lost coin and the other one is of the lost son, the prodigal son. But what's good about the story is each one of those stories have a good ending. The story today I bring before you is of the lost sheep. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for who you are, for what you've done, for what you're doing, and for what you will do. I come before you today to learn new ways, to, to have understanding of your word, to be transformed by our lives, and change that your will is being done in our lives. And let your Holy Spirit be your guide. Let these words edify, strength, and courage. Yes, let them build up. To make you glorify. ears to hear, eyes to see beyond a circumstance and situation, the heart to see the truth. Just be rich on today, your mercy, your kindness, your love, your joy, your peace. Let it rain down on today. To make you glorify. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Jesus. Church says, Amen. 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 Oh, bless the Lord. Amen. We're growing up in the Lord's hands. Amen. Yes. It's special. But today, I want to pay attention to the book of Luke, chapter 15. Beginning at verse 1, it reads as follows. I'm reading out of King James. It says, And then drew near unto him all the publicans. The publican is a tax collector and sinners. For to hear him, referring to Jesus, and the Pharisees, those are the religious leaders of the scribes. They were like theologians, they copied stuff and uh, supported the Pharisees. These men received sinners and eat with them, referring to Christ. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of those for them? Do not he leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness to go after it, which is lost until he find it. When he hath found it, he lay it on his shoulder, rejoicing. The sheep weighed about, a grown sheep would weigh about 110 to 125 pounds on average. When he cometh home, he called together his friends and neighbors, saying unto him, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. A parable is really not an actual story of an actual person. It's a story that's put together to have like a moral lesson in it. So it's not an actual person that this is referencing to, even though it is true that the Lord goes after those that belong to him. He says that all that the Father gives him, he shall lose none. Here in the story here, I want to pay attention first to the Pharisees and the publicans. The Pharisees were the religious leaders of the day. They were very legalistic. They wanted to go, you know, show and tell, see me by the rule. It was more so a physical display of God than a spiritual display. And the Pharisees, these religious leaders of Jesus' day, wanted to find fault in Jesus so they could disqualify him before the people. And one of the things they had against Jesus was that they found it was common for him to eat with sinners and tax collectors. And they was offended by it. They thought it was wrong. See, after all, Jesus did eat with the tax collector and sinners. The people were considered unclean and they were looked down upon 
by society, especially the Pharisees. Jesus shows up. He has a totally different way of doing business. He has an unorthodox style of ministry and is one that the Pharisees weren't familiar with, but is very effective. Now, tax collectors was hated because, sort of like the tax man now, but it was worse. <laughs> and the tax collectors worked for the Romans. And for the most part, the Jews didn't have no care for the Romans. And even though the tax collectors were Jews, in most cases, and one of these cases I want to get some reference to is a tax collector named Levi. Levi was a tax collector, and the Lord came and drew him in. And Levi is better known as Matthew, is the one that's responsible for the gospel, the, the, the gospel of Matthew. Matthew, he also was one of the 12 apostles, one of the original 12, a tax collector. That being said, it was another example of how good God is, what he does to reach out. It's a story about a man named Saul who persecuted the church. He was a Pharisee as well, but he later became an apostle. And he's better known as the name of Paul. And Paul is responsible for writing nearly two-thirds of the New Testament. So it shows us how God moves. The, the thing that I want to bring before you today is that you can recognize the value of one. That God will leave 99 sheep unattended to go get one because he refused to lose any. 99 with him just won't do it. And he says in the book of John, the Gospel of John, he says that all that the Father give, give him shall come to him. I want to read this to you. Chapter 6, verse 37. You have the Bibles. 6 and 37. He says, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that come to me I will no wise cast out. Christ is telling you that whoever the Father gives him, he has to receive him, because there's no variance between the Son and the Father. He says, I came down from heaven not to do my own will. It's important for you to know what Christ's purpose is. And he said, he come to do the will of his Father. And this is the will of him that sent me. He said, that of all which he hath given me, I shall lose nothing, but shall raise it up again at the last day. I shall lose nothing. None. When we talk about people that belong to Jesus. We're not talking about people who don't belong to Jesus. You turn your Bibles to the Gospel of John, chapter 10. I need some familiar passages of Scripture because I, I often reference to these because I want you to know that this is not a part-time love affair. It's, it's an everlasting love affair. I will give up 99 to go find one. And guess what? Some of you were the one. Hello? It says this in verse number 26. He said, but you believe not because you are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. How many know when the Lord speaks to you? Amen. Call you. Yeah. You know. Amen. He says, I give unto them eternal life, and they should never, look at your neighbor and say, never, never, never perish. He says, and neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. And that includes you. You know, sometimes you're your worst enemy. Yes. Then he says, my father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. God the Father gives them to Christ. Christ, once he receives you, the Holy Spirit seals you. Once you belong to him, you will always belong to him. That's why he refused to leave a sheep by itself. Amen. Let me tell you the importance of having a good shepherd. A shepherd is a protector. Sheep are not good at defending themselves. I mean, you know that. Yeah. A sheep is about as strong as a bubble. <laughs> a bubble can't hurt nothing, can it? That's about, that's about what a sheep is. So it's important for a sheep to stay with the shepherd. But what causes a sheep to, to go astray? 
sometimes things, and oftentimes, and this is reality, a sheep, when it's feeding, it doesn't look up very often. So what happens is, it's grazing, and the next thing you know, it's just straight away from the rest of the group. And he's out by himself because he's just eating and walking away. You know, I, I've been out in the woods. I, I hunt stuff. I've been tracking a deer, and I look up, and I was like, wow, girl, it's almost dark. And guess what? I don't remember how I came in. I've been lost in the woods for like four or six hours in the cold. One time I was lost so long, I got so tired, I had to set up to go to sleep. It was like 12 o'clock at night. It was like 12 midnight. And uh, I was uh, coming out of the woods, and usually I come right out. Okay? I got a pretty good sense of where I'm at. And so when I went there, when it turned dark, it's a different look. <laughs> so, so I was uh, I was walking around with my equipment. It was kind of heavy. And so I, I said, wow. It's been like two hours I'm going to pass, because I know three hours, I'm at four hours, and I'm all tired now. So I said, I don't want to sleep on the ground, I don't know where, where's where I'm at. Where I was armed, though, but, but I says, let me put my stand up in the tree high enough off the ground to be okay. So once I set it up there, this is what I did. I prayed. I said, Lord, if I don't get home real soon, my family going to be tripping, because my wife beyond me about me going hunting by myself. And I do it a lot. And I used to tell her, hey, I'm good to go on my way, you know, Tarzan or something. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I'm lost. I'm up in the woods. I pray. Something got me right down out of that tree. It was in 50 yards. I saw my truck. I was like, I walked around all that time. What I should have did was pray while I was walking around. I didn't, I, I, I didn't even think about it until, until it got to where it was, it was seeming desperate. I'm telling you, don't wait to get desperate to pray because sometimes you can get fixed as soon as you get in trouble. Yes. And I waited all to the end of that. I learned the lesson. I said, you know what? I also had to get out of the woods, so I left my stuff in there. I didn't go back to get the other stuff. Once I saw that car, I was like, hey, I see that in the daytime. And I, and I left. But getting lost is, is a part of being in, in, in your walk with the Lord. Sometimes you're going to stumble across some things and drift off because of uh, some things you like that you shouldn't like. Hello? You might do some things you don't need to be doing, and it can lure you away. It's just a little at a time. The next day you know you look up, you're over here. I only miss church one week, uh, now it's three weeks. Now it's once every six months or so. Now it's like this. I used to read the Bible every day. Now I, it's just occasionally I fell off. It don't seem like these things is working. So you drift away. But guess what? Guess we have a job. We do. Look for the drifters. Because you know why? Those drifters belong to the Lord. If they belong to the Lord and you say that's your brother and your sister. So you need to make some phone calls. You need to check on some people. You need to look to, to reconcile some things with some people. They will come back to fellowship. Just because they left doesn't mean that they are saved. And even if they sin after they leave, it doesn't mean that they're not saved. Because guess what? Saved people sin. How many people are that in the church? Yeah. I want to make sure we get church. <laughs> Save people still sin, huh? Yeah. But we don't practice sin, do we? Yeah. We're not supposed to practice what the saying. I don't know if you know this, but we don't supposed to practice sin. <laughs> this love God has for us is so great that He's willing to leave the 99 to search for the one. I want to talk about the greatness of his love. And I think part of the reason why I presented this message from Luke is because I've been listening to this song. It's called Reckless Love. And this is what this, the, the, the uh, singer says in the song. He says, there's no light, no darkness that you won't light up. Amen. No mountain you won't climb up coming after me. Yes. He said, there's no wall you won't tear down. No kick down. No wall you won't kick down. No lie you won't tear down. Coming after me. That's God in pursuit of me. 
He loved you so much. He's willing to give all he had to give, get you back. Amen. Isn't that special? Amen. He won't leave you where he found you. Amen. He won't leave the one. And you would think like this. Lord, that sheep wandered off on his own. The 99, he followed the rules. But when it speaks about the Lord going to, to recover the sheep, he doesn't speak complaining. That little sheep should know what to do. He should have stayed with the fall. I should leave him out there because now I got jeopardized 99 and go get to one. But you never hear the Lord say that, do you? So if you don't hear the Lord say that, don't you say that. Sometimes we're like, well, he's bringing that stuff all on himself. Let me ever say that before. He ain't catching on. Let me heard say that. Yes. Some of y'all say yes, but God put their hands up today. It's a handshake kind of yes. Listen, don't be so mad you can't reach out to someone that's trapped in sin. Don't, don't be so, so offended that you forget he's where you used to be. This was good about God. He says this. He said, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity to, of us all. That's in Isaiah 53 and 6. But God's love is overwhelming. It's overwhelming. It's never ending. It's always pursuing. It never gives up. It never fails. It's reckless. You might want to say, thank you, Jesus, for your great love. We, we say yes and amen to, to the ways and the promises of God. Because he is worthy of all praise, honor, and glory. The Lord reaches out to the outcast, the downtrodden, the broken, the bruised, those with a contrite heart. And he heals them all. Didn't the Lord heal you? Yeah. If you say you've been healed. The Lord healed you. His love is so great, he needs 99 to get one. 99 to get one. This is a parable, but yet it's the true. A parable is not actually a person, it's just it's a, it's a story that's put together with a moral lesson to learn from. It. This this chapter, 15 has three. I told you uh lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. And getting to the one about the prodigal son, you remember the story about how he went off with riotous living and squandered all the money that he had, and finally he found himself taking care of the swine. And you know Jews do not suppose to mingle with swine. But he found himself taking care of swine. He said, hey, I could, I'd rather just be a servant at my father's house. I need to go back home. But when he came back home, his father was happy to see him and he killed the fatted calf. But his brother, who stayed there and did all the stuff that the father told him, he was not happy, was he? Is his heart right? Isn't that funny how the person that stayed there that did all of the assignments still got a heart problem? He was angry at his father, jealous, because his father killed the fatted calf for his brother. And he stayed there. Don't be angry when someone comes back home. Don't be angry when the Lord draws someone out of sin. Make an earnest effort yourself to reach out to those lost. Someone might be family members, son, daughters, nieces, nephews, grandbabies. You don't have patience with them. Just think about how much time the Lord had to spend on you. How many came to salvation the first time the Lord Put a word out. Well, I didn't get no take of it. Huh? Tell me about the second time. About the 13th or the 20th. The 30th. It was ongoing, wasn't it? Remember, God loves you enough to where he would leave 99 to get that one. If he started with 100, he would finish with 100. He would lose none. And you're so special. You wrote your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. You're so special, he said, that where I am, you may be also. You're so special. He seals you with the Holy Spirit of God until the day of redemption. 
99 will not do. You want 100. Amen? Amen. He presses his way because he loves us with great love. Now, if anybody been here used to be telling this, how do God love us? What level is it? If y'all were younger, I would say I'd get my bill out. I've seen that some of y'all older than me. God loves one kind of way. It's a great love. There's no small love with God. There's nobody who loved just a little. He showed the same love he had for the son he has for you. Love one another is one of the commandments that you love one another as you love your so, it's real sweet, isn't it? Yes. And if you love someone, you'll pursue them. So I want, I want to hear some testimonies about restorations coming up. Now some of you don't know this because y'all don't come to 8 o'clock service, but sometimes at 8 o'clock service, I let people stand up and testify, share, share testimony. As a matter of fact, today, Sister Angela, she stood up and shared her testimony. God has been good to you. Y'all should be jumping up to the ceiling. Amen. Just think where you come from. Just think hell is not your home. Hello? The Lord cares for you. He provides for you. He protects you. He nurtures you. He keeps you in the midst of a storm. He has angels camped around you. Hello? Yes. Amen. Yes. You are the sheep of this pastor. And if you go astray, he will come get you. He won't let you go back. Yes. You remember when the children of Israel were set free from the hands of Pharaoh in the book of Exodus? They crossed the Red Sea. And when they got on the other side, some of them started talking about going back. That's what the Lord did to shut that door. Put the water back in. He didn't leave that path wide open. Once they crossed, he cut it off. And, and Pharaoh pursued the children of Israel and he drowned in the Red Sea. So one thing I need you to see here, the water wasn't just a defense for Pharaoh. It was to prevent the children of Israel from trying to go back to what they used to. The name said, don't try to go back to what you used to do. <laughs> don't try to put new wine in old skins. There's going to be some new things coming your way. You, know? you, you just got to be ready for it. Yeah. You know, sometimes I, 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 I'll be going for the Lord. I was up here this morning, probably like six of them, man, across this floor, praying. I'd be asking the Lord, Lord, why do sometimes you just only show me? Why are you going to show the rest of them? <laughs> it would make my job easier. But sometimes it would be just me. He showed me just what it is. And then once I, I tell some people, embrace some, I'm gone. But it makes my job harder when it's me and I communicate it to somebody. It's like, hey, I didn't feel it that way. I said, well, it don't give me, he, didn't, he didn't give me no options. He didn't give me a plan B. Looks at him and said, there's no plan B with God. His way, and it's the only way. And when you hear it, embrace it. Whether you, whether you totally understand or not, if it's of God, do it. So you might say to yourself, "Well, how do I know if it's of God?" It can't violate His word. It can't go against His word. If you think something is wrong, check and see how it lines up with the word of God. If you find no mistakes. Hello? So, why did the Lord leave 90 men to come get one? He's speaking in tongues. Because of your value to Him. Yes. You have a great value to Him. It's yes. so great that it almost bankrupt heaven because God sent His only Son to redeem you. And guess what he had to do to redeem you? He had to taste death. Yes. And he did it with honor. Didn't he? Yes. Do you think if you've been running the stakes through my hands, if we're just going to stay here and say, 
hey, way to go. <laughs> nah, you know what I've been doing? I'm like, hey, blind Bartimaeus, man, what's going on? Okay, help me out here. Hey, what about those people I filled with the 5,000 with the two, uh, two loaves and the fish? Where are they at? Right. Hey, you was on the boat when I caught in the storm. Where are you at? Where are you at? You remember I cast that demon out? What happened to you? Lazarus, I know you on my team. I raised you from the dead. Where were all these people at? They was out there crucify him. Can you imagine how to crucify to a person that restored your sight? And do you know in the New Testament, before the New Testament, there's not no mention in the Old Testament of a person ever having his sight restored. This Christ shows up and he's doing wonders they ain't never even saw before. And what you think? I'm going to say crucify God to heal me, to raise me from the dead, that restore sight to the blind, Yes, to fix people that will with their hand. The, the man for 38 years, he healed them. Where were they at? Sometimes we just like that today. Nope. God can fix you and you got real good. And you won't come back till you get broken again. Amen. That's the game you play. But your neighbor said, stop. 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 Say, I'm not saying it's you, but it might be somebody who's close by. <laughs> So get this. What we want to do is win people over. The Bible said, he who wins souls is wise. 99 won't do. We not willing to lose none. We not willing to give over none to the enemy. Zero. Look your neighbor said, we not willing to give up none. Amen.